Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Summer going well? Good. Good. So we're closing out our series called Wrong Right. We've been talking about how um, God God's desire is to see injustices in the world made right. Um, that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross, so that injustices could be made right. And probably throughout this, we've kind of encouraged you guys um, to think about ways that you can be righting injustices yourself. And probably for a lot of you, you're thinking, like, I'm just a, I'm just a kid. I'm just in high school. I'm just in middle school. I can't really do a lot of that. But part of that was why we had to do that survey tonight. Um, really, none of it mattered except for that last question. I don't remember the exact wording, but it was basically how much money do you have to make in order to be considered in the top 50% of the world's wealth. So 30 of you took that survey, but only four of you got that answer right. Because the amount of money that you need to make to be considered in the top 50% of the richest people in the world, in order to be considered half of the richest people in the world, you only have to make $1,500 a year. $1,500 a year puts you in the top 50% of the world's wealth. And probably for a lot of you, you make that an allowance in the year. Maybe you make that for in your birth, like birthdays, Christmas gifts. Like There's probably, I would say, at least 50% of the people in this room, you get, whether you get actual physical cash in your hands, $1,500 throughout the year, like, you get $1,500, like, your parents feed you, your parent, you have a house, like, some of us pay $1,500 in mortgage every month, so, like, just think about that, like, every single person in this room, we are in the top 50% of the wealth in the world, and that's because most of the world lives on less than $2 a day. Most people in the world live on less than $2 a day. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about, or we hear a lot about, um, you know, poverty. We hear a lot about, you know, we have poverty here in America. And even in South Carolina, the average income per person in South Carolina in 2016 Per year was $25,521. So the entire state of South Carolina is considered to be among the 50% of the wealthiest in the world. The U.S. poverty line, so for an individual to be considered in poverty, to be living in poverty, to receive benefits and stuff like that, for an individual in 2017 that line in America was $12,060. So even the people in America who are living in poverty are still considered to be in the top 50% richest in the world. And for a lot of you in here, you're sitting here listening to this, and, and I know even when I was growing up, like, like it didn't feel that way. Like, it probably doesn't feel that way for a lot of you. It probably doesn't feel that way for most of us in here. But your family is above average, is well above average. I didn't look at all the answers for where people thought their families fell compared to the rest of the world. But every person in this room, whether we, whether we believe it or not, when compared to the world, I'm not saying, I know, you know, comparing each other in the room is, is a lot different, but comparing ourselves to the, the world, every person in the world, we are well above average, and we are blessed. Like We are blessed to live in a country where we're free. We're blessed to live in a country where the poorest person in America is still considered to be among the 50% wealthiest in the world. And even though we're all more blessed than the majority of the world, we can all become even more blessed. We can all become even more blessed. And Jesus tells us a little bit how. And if you remember from last week, I know some of you are new with us, so you weren't here with us last week. But last week, we looked at 
one of Jesus' most popular sermons. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to go back to that tonight. But before I read, I'm going to do something that's going to feel really weird. So I want you to close your eyes. I want everybody to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that you're a part of this audience at this Sermon on the Mount. You're a part of this audience that's listening to Jesus. You've, you've, you've heard about this guy. Remember, we didn't, have, we didn't have internet. We didn't have social media back then. Everything was just word of mouth. So you've heard about this Jesus guy, and everything you hear about him, he just seems to cause controversy everywhere he goes. He's upsetting the Pharisees. He's upsetting everybody everywhere that he goes. But you've also heard that he's been spreading good news for normal people like you. He's been, he's been spreading good news for people who, who aren't wealthy, who aren't special, who aren't religious, and even for, for what people who aren't considered blessed. So you hear about this guy, you hear he's coming, he's coming close by, and you want to hear what he has to say. So, so what you've done is you've, you've packed your lunch, and you've spent a good portion of your day hiking up a mountain. Remember, this is Sermon on the Mount. So you've hiked up this mountain to get a good seat. And then finally, Jesus gets up to teach. And so as your eyes are closed, thinking about this scene that we just said, I want you to think about, like, what are the things that you see? What, what do you hear? What do you feel? And I'm going to continue. I'm going to read through this verse, and you can continue to keep your eyes closed. I guess you don't even have to put it on the screen because everybody's supposed to have their eyes closed. So eyes closed. I'm going to read this passage to you. This is Jesus speaking to this people, to these people on the mountain. And this is what he says. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You guys can open your eyes. So Jesus, with, with these, these few verses that I just read to you, with this, with this passage that he just spoke, to these people on this mountain, he has just turned conventional wisdom upside down. He has turned the way that we think about things completely over on its side because it, he's telling them it's, it's not the rich, it's not the happy, it's not the confident, it's not even the popular people who are blessed. What he's telling them here is there, there are two people in this world who are the most blessed. And the first of those is people in need. He talks about the poor. He talks about the grieving, the humble. He talks about those who are desperate for justice. And then that second group is he talks about the people who meet the needs of others. So that first group is people who are in need. The second group is people who are meeting those needs. And he talks about the merciful, the pure of heart, the peacemakers, and those who suffer for doing what is right. And according to Jesus, people who are blessed are not always the most privileged People who are blessed don't always live the most extravagant lifestyle. People who are blessed don't always have tons and tons of money pouring out of their pockets. Because the people that he's talking about, they're the people who are in need and the people who are meeting the needs of others. And you notice in these, in these verses, verses 3 through 10 in Matthew chapter 5, he leaves out people whose needs have already been met but who are not meeting the needs of others in return. Back about three or four weeks ago in week one, we talked about how Jesus saw the people who were in most need of justice. He, he, see, he sought out the weakest, he sought out the poorest, the most broken, and he brought them the hope of justice. And then he invited us to fight for justice alongside him. Because when we fight for justice, God says that we're blessed. When we fight for justice, God says that we are blessed. So I want to ask you tonight, which person are you? Are you the person that's in need? Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're grieving. Maybe you're lonely. 
Maybe you're struggling to get by. Well, I want you to know that you are blessed because you are exactly where you need to be in order to receive God's comfort, his generosity, his peace, and his comfort. Maybe some of you in here are, are meeting the needs of others. What, what have you done lately to right someone else's wrongs? Have you shown people mercy? Have you served? Have you helped? Or have you cared for someone with pure motives? Not to get something out of it, but with pure motives simply because they needed your help. If that's you, then I would say that you're blessed. Because you are exactly where you need to be in order to know God better and receive all that he has for you. And then there are probably some of you in here that you're only concerned with your own needs. You could care less about what's going on with the person next to you. All you care about is yourself and meeting your own needs. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're happy or you're grieving. It doesn't matter if you're taken care of or you're in need. We all have something to give. Because we are all called by Jesus to fight for justice by fighting for each other. You see, too often we're consumed with our own needs that we fail to consider the needs of others. Because guys, we have been blessed to be a blessing. Jesus fought for justice on your behalf so that you could fight alongside him on behalf of someone else. Jesus didn't die on that cross. I've said this before. Jesus didn't die on that cross so that you could just get saved, live your life, and not do anything. Jesus died on the cross so that your needs could be met. He met the greatest need. None of us in this room have a need greater than than salvation. None of us in this room need a relationship with Christ more than anything else. That is our greatest need, and Jesus met that need. And we simply have to go to him. We simply have to enter into a relationship with him, and we are blessed. So, I say all that, I, I, this is something that I have personally been convicted about um, myself. So you see, for a long time, even, even as a pastor, for a long time, whenever I would, I would drive by somebody who was begging, whenever I would drive by somebody who was, was homeless, I had a really bad habit of just assuming that they were drunks. I had a bad habit of assuming that they were drug users. And a lot of times I thought to myself that, that they just got themselves in that situation. So I would just drive by and not give it another thought. But then I met D, who cares for them, talks with them. She keeps bags of water and crackers and stuff in her car so that she can help people who are in need. And what I've learned through doing that alongside her, is that a lot of these people who are homeless, it's just out of unfortunate circumstances. I would confidently say most homeless people are not homeless just because they're alcoholics or drug users. Something happened. And a lot of times, just what I've learned from D is a lot of times they just want somebody to talk to like, Dee D has had people tell her just how much they appreciate that, that she would just stop and talk to them or even give them a hug because that's the biggest thing. It's because, I mean, people, people like, don't want to touch them. But just to, to sit down with them and have a conversation with them and show them that they matter. A lot of times we'll, we'll try to buy food or we'll, we'll try to give them water whenever they let us. We usually don't just give out money, but like I said, a lot of times they don't even need those things. They just want someone to show that they care. They just want someone to talk to. 
and I'm not, I'm not telling, that's just my personal experience. That was, a, that was a place where I saw needs and I wasn't meeting them because of selfish thoughts. And I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and encourage you guys to, I'm pretty sure your parents would kill me, but I'm not going to sit here and encourage you guys to stop and, and talk to every homeless person you see on the side of the road. I would actually discourage that if you're, if you're by yourself um, or even not with an adult. But, but guys, there's, there are needs all around us. There are people who are in need, and sometimes it's just as simple as a conversation. Sometimes it's as simple as a hug. And I don't want you guys to miss out on God's blessing because you failed to consider somebody else's need. There are people who are hurting, people who are grieving, people who are lonely all around you. There are people who, are, who need a friend. There are people who just need a kind word. People who just need a hug sometimes. Like, it's not, it's not always a money thing when we talk about blessing people. It's not always talking about giving people stuff. Sometimes it's as simple as just having a conversation with someone and showing them that you care. Because you don't need to be rich to meet other people's needs. You just need to be willing. You need to be willing to follow God's example. You need to be willing to follow Jesus' example in doing whatever it takes to meet the needs of others. And that, these past four weeks of this series, we've been talking about what it looks like to fight for justice. We've been talking about what it looks like to right the wrongs in this world. And that's how we do it. That's how we fight for justice. Sometimes we do fight by taking a stand. Sometimes we do take, we do fight for justice by making a scene. But a lot of times, most of the times, it's far less flashy. Sometimes it's quiet, it's gentle. Sometimes you're not going to get recognized for it. But it's always the way of Jesus. Fighting for justice, fighting for the needs of others is always what Jesus asks for, of us. And so this week, I want, I want you guys to think about this as, you, as, you, as we go into this last song and as you go into your small groups. I want you to think about how will you fight for justice this week? What things will you do to meet the needs of those around you? Because when we fight for justice, God says that we're blessed. Let's pray. God, I thank you for just that. God, for the blessing that we already have. God, the blessing of knowing that, that we live in a country where essentially every person in this country is considered among the 50% wealthiest in the world. God, I thank you for that blessing that, that we're so undeserving of, that we have nothing to do with, God, but you did. And God, I ask that, God, that you would just work in our hearts tonight, God. God, if there are those of us in here who, who were only wrapped up in ourselves, we're only wrapped up with meeting our own needs, God. I pray that you would, you would break our hearts, God. That you would break our hearts to see the needs of those around us, to see where we can be a blessing, to see where we can help someone in need, God. Point us in that direction, God. Lead us, guide us, and direct us to be a blessing to others, God, so that we can join you in this fight for justice. God, we ask all these things in your name.